Well, is music streaming the future for all of us? I'm joined now in our central London studio by Stephen Budd, the chair of the Music Managers Forum, and in New York by Lady Gaga's former DJ, Brendan J. Sullivan, who's also written a book on the pop star's rise to fame. Thank you both for joining us, hey, gentlemen. Hi. First of all, Stephen Budd, isn't there a certain inevitability about Spotify in this day and age? I think there is. I think that the consumers want uh, streaming. The whole industry is moving towards that way. And I think that over the next um, three to four years, we're going to see a massive overall take up of streaming right across the board. And, uh, and, and down the day of the download is, is starting to decline. What do you think, Brandon? What we're talking about here is the difference between hardware and software. And musicians don't make software. They always are in the business of making hardware that connects with your fans. When you think of your favorite records, you think of them differently than you may think of your favorite MS-DOS program from 1985. You know, we need to give music fans the hardware to enjoy what they've bought. He's got a point, hasn't he, Stephen? I mean, for a lot of people, many of us re remember record collections, CD collections. It's difficult to have a music collection if it's just on an app called Spotify, isn't it? It's not the well, same tangible thing. Well, I, we all love, our, those of us of a certain age, all love our vinyl, our CDs, me particularly vinyl, and I think that there's going to be an attachment to that and that will still exist. I mean, people are going to be buying, uh, the, the rise of vinyl sales has been going up over the last few years, but, but realistically, People want access to uh, a, an enormous quantity of music. The fact that you can get Spotify on your, uh, on your phone, on your tablet, it's available 24-7. Uh, uh, people can either subscribe without um, hearing advertising or uh, they get it for free. Uh, but having to listen to advertising. But it's only going one way, I'm afraid. You know, it, the, the way that the, the future of music is going to be consumed is by streaming, which isn't either a radio play yeah. or a download. Steven. It's a new thing. Brandon? Stephen, the problem here is that we haven't... We haven't worked all the bugs out of the software yet. A young kid now who has, spends nine ninety five a month on Spotify will have to choose between cancelling Spotify and buying Taylor's album for twelve ninety nine. Now Taylor Swift made sixty four million dollars last year. She could actually buy that album full price for four point nine million fans. What we're talking about here is Taylor's record company and the people who provide access to the music all over the world. I mean, Steve, As of now, their only way of listening to it for free would be on YouTube. Well, indeed, YouTube, YouTube is the biggest streaming service in the world. I mean, the, the question is, is whether, is whether streaming is the way of the future. And, and the, you know, the reality is streaming is the way of the future. That's the way the music industry is going. And it's a question for us in the music industry of how we can grow that pie so that, you know, creators, so that artists get paid a greater share of the pie. That's going to be a really important part of, of the, the digital horizon of the future is how that gets worked out, because at the moment artists are receiving quite small percentages but the main point is that if um, uh, streaming grows at the rate it is at the moment there are 25 million Spotify uh, users once that grows to a hundred million we're going to see a great deal more income coming into the music industry it's not that the income is there it's like as Asimov said the future is already here it's just not well enough spread around you can't have a, a streaming music DJ playing at Burning Man in the desert. You can't have streaming music playing in uh, the basements in parties in Afghanistan and Kabul where the music has yet to reach people. It would I be agree. like going back to a time when there were mixtapes being traded around Iran of Michael Jackson. Sure. I mean, you know, music's a personal thing. People want to share music in whatever way. When we were kids, we would make mixtapes on cassette and hand them to our friends. Um, people do that now digitally. You know, people send us each other Spotify playlists. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm not against, you know, um, the previous ways of consuming music. I'm a massive vinyl lover. You know, I even love eight track and cassettes, but that's another thing. But, you know, realistically, where it's going is for the mass of the future, it's going to be streaming. You know, people in Africa. Africa, people in India, people in Asia, you know, shortly they're going to be able to access Spotify or their competitors 
uh, on their handsets. And when that happens, you know, it's opening up a, okay. a music market to a whole new uh, potential realm and world of people. It's just the way it is, um, you know, whether, whether we like it or not. But what it does offer the consumer is a lot more choice. And, and frankly, people love Spotify. You know, the question is, is why Taylor Swift has taken off her music from Spotify. And I think that that's, we're at a particular moment she where it's a a lot of great reasons for doing Gentlemen, that. Gentlemen, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to barge in there, I'm afraid. We have run out of time. Thank you both for uh, taking part in a very interesting uh, issue, which is raising all sorts of ideas for the future. Stephen Budd and also Brendan J. Sullivan, thank you both very much indeed for joining us here on Sky News. Thank you. You're watching yeah. Sky News. Coming up, sport. Has Liverpool considered dropping their captain?